Welcome back to episode 147 of the Block Runner Podcast. I'm your host, William, always here with your co-host, I Man. What up, what up? And on the sticks, we got TJ. Hello. All right. All right, man, we got a lot to talk about. There's a lot. <laughs> a so lot to recap. So we went to sick. <laughs> East Denver, got sick. Yeah, Almost unfortunately. Died. Yeah, we apologize for not being like breaking news, boys. Yeah. You know, like we missed the FTX debacle by like a week or so because we were also sick. Yeah. During that period, this is probably like the most juiciest of events that have uh, unraveled in recent times. Yeah, right? this is this is definitely much bigger than crypto. Yeah, exactly. FTX was mostly like a crypto exclusive event, right? But it was yeah. still had like widespread ramifications. Tons of people lost a lot of money. Yeah, tons of confidence exited the market basically, and apparently there's a tiny bit of like a contagion even into like the traditional finance space just a little bit with silvergate bank and stuff yeah but crypto is not to blame for what's going on here no definitely not in like the uh banking sector there's a whole i guess what people like pop are calling is it's the beginning of a whole financial collapse right yeah yeah that's yeah. what it looks like in, according to the charts here um so <laughs> let's just kind of recap our uh, last two weeks so we went to east denver um we were there for about four days <clears throat> And uh, we got to see interesting experience. Yeah, yeah, we got to see Vitalik on Zoom. <laughs> Correct, <laughs> but Vitalik was like a small part of the yeah, whole experience. To be honest, definitely was. The main takeaways that I think we kind of got away from the from that event. Obviously, the Ethereum community massive. I think it was the biggest event they've yeah. had so far. That's right. A lot of that's probably attributed to the fact that it was free entry, so people took advantage of that. Mm -hmm. But still, there was a lot of people there looking to build new projects and stuff. So. It was, that's a bullish indicator. Yeah. Even in a bear market, there's so much activity happening. And then another takeaway, layer two madness. Yeah. Conf confirmed. Literally madness. Yeah. Just, just way too many. Possibly. Coinbase is <laughs> creating their own layer two. There's optimistic rollups, Arbitrum, Correct. there's ZK. Yeah. And it makes sense. Like you have to, if you're a big, like consensus has their own coming out as well soon. You know, it's just if you're a big entity like that in the Web3 space, you have to put your foot in that race. You mm -hmm. just do because there's a lot of t up for stake, right? It's literally the fees of the of the transaction layer of the network, the sequencer fees. Mm -hmm. That's basically what you get as if you're a Coinbase or a Consensus mm -hmm. or a ZK Sync, whatever. Yeah. All you're really doing is you're rolling out basically like a centralized service for mm, for yeah. application builders yeah. to to facilitate transactions and then eventually append that to the main chain right and you get handsomely rewarded for that <laughs> you get a cut of those fees so from a business perspective you have to get into that and position yourself one way or another mm -hmm. right if you're coinbase you can't let that opportunity just slide yeah. you know you got to be a sequencer so i think at the end of the day this whole layer 2 thing it's going to pan out and there's going to be probably 20 or 30 or so sequencers in the network it's and then good. it's yeah. and then it'll consolidate down to two or three probably over time yeah yeah so that's what's happening <laughs> we've kind of been talking about this for the last six months or so we've been covering it yeah not only that uh but arbitrum just yesterday so yeah. today is just uh today is march 17th friday mm -hmm. yesterday arbitrum came out with a video kind of a little cringy but point is they are doing an airdrop on the 23rd which is about a week from now yeah so that just more indication that the the, the heat or the flame of the layer two wars are kindling is kindling there is kindling mean like growing or is that like dampening the, the flame mm. i don't know i'm not a camper <laughs> kindles like starting starting it perfect yeah. that's what exactly what i mean the, yeah. the flames are being kindled <laughs> <laughs> and this airdrop is a good indication of that right yeah yeah. So ZK Sync's coming out. They don't have a token yet. No, but that that's going to be a big one. Yeah, everyone's saying this Arbitrum drop, I think, is the biggest one of all time. Is it really? People are predicting it to be such. Yeah, I think they have uh, narrowed it down from like 2.3 million wallets that mm. could have um, qualified down to like 600,000 or 200,000. 600,000. Like that. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of uh, money being divvied out. It is. It's amazing that the you know that's how you onboard a community i guess right yeah or you go through the this the stage of i guess um just bringing on more community governance as part of like the platform's progression and stuff mm -hmm. like that so this is very like in line with the web3 ethos you know yeah, it is and expected we predicted this would happen it's happening 
Uh, I think it's safe to assume at some point ZK Sync will go through the same yeah. transitionary period at some point, right? Yeah, it's good to see that these projects are still releasing tokens despite all this <laughs> regulatory uh, nightmare. <sighs> yeah, so let, let's let's get into it, dude. What, what, what actually happened since we've been sick? You um, know, there was a major scare with USDC at one point. Yeah, right. so a few days after ETH Denver, yes. USDC gets de-pegged. That was probably one of the more terrifying moments it of my was whole career. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and and I used to be an active trader, you know, it just didn't feel as grave as seeing like something so fundamentally Yes like uh, backed. Yeah. This is supposed to be like the, the golden child of the Web3 space, something that has yeah. like all this regulatory yeah, you know, safeguarding. Yeah, we call it Coinbase, Circle, and USDC a comfy cloud. I remember at the conference, we literally went up to the Coinbase booth. Yeah, yeah. We started like asking them, like, is is you, USDC safe? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Are you guys about to collapse? I think yeah. And they had like the biggest like, bug eyes, dude. They were so scared. They're like, what are you talking about? It's like it funds are safe, basically. Yeah. And like you guys are, you guys are buying into the rumors. It's yeah. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> they didn't know what the fuck was no. going on. They're just you know. No, they're just like employees. Correct. So it was kind of like a bad thing to ask, but the rumors were true. It they were. Was. Yeah. And there was also a ton of other rumors floating around at the conference, not necessarily totally related to USDC or Coinbase or Circle or whatever. Um, somebody literally came on stage. What's her name? Caitlin uh, Long. Yeah, she's opening a bank in Wyoming, right? But she came on. I, th I th It felt like a total, like, Edward Snowden moment, you know, like a true whistleblower. Yeah trying to give everybody in the room a heads up of like what was what was coming right she yeah there she is oh wow oh, she oh, was six hours ago she did a podcast with uh yeah so we haven't even watched this but McCormick. I, based on what she said at the conference i recommend everybody go watch that because yes she has the inside scoop clearly she does she's she's <laughs> being targeted by the government she is yeah yeah and she yeah she was name dropping she knew like the whole architecture of this attack in yeah. and out. And she, she went on stage for about 30 minutes. It wasn't like a it, teleprompted speech or nothing. No. And I don't think she was scheduled to be up there. I think, yeah, I think they just put her up there. It seems like it. It's like, yeah. Oh, just go ahead. Like, it's like I, I got a whistle. I need to blow it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it seemed like it, they were just, it's like, go ahead. Like she didn't really know exactly what she could say, but the organizers yeah. of the event were like, just, just rant. Yeah, just, just yeah. Go. Basically, you need to listen to Caitlyn, so she's gonna come on. Yeah, and we were all just like, kind of like in we were, shock. Well, we were so at the time. This was at the end of the day, so we were exhausted. So most True. of the talks weren't all that like invigorating. So we were kind of like falling a lot of asleep. There's a lot of show festing. Right? Yeah, so we we're falling asleep on the couch. Right, they had mm -hmm. couches there. She came on. She started talking about banks and failures and all this stuff, and yeah. we're like, we we were listening. Yeah, I remember we gave each other the look. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're like, are, like, are you, are you are seeing you, this? Yeah. Is, is, is she saying what I think she's saying? Yeah. And I'm over there like rocking in my seat, yeah. in, like pure panic <laughs> and like uh, straight up like, over anxiety. Yeah. Because this is, I mean, I kind of knew this was gonna come at some point. But You've been I calling it, yeah. For years, right? We've been having these discussions. What is going to be the United States's like stance on all of Web three once they kind of figure out, you know, I guess uh, existential threat that it could pose to mm. their position of power, right? Yeah, that's that's been my claim. Like, I think everything that's, I mean, Bitcoin was created out of the financial collapse of two thousand eight, right? Is it, yeah. it is the whole purpose, the premise of creating a digital financial system is to not depend on the United States supremacy, correct? from an economics perspective, right? So it's like, that doesn't seem like something the United States would feel very, you know, comfy supporting, <laughs> right? That was my prediction. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't know how they're going to like strategically fight against it. Yeah. But it seems like this is the beginnings of it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And that's what Caitlin Long is kind of saying too. Well, so what do you think, dude? Like, cause your position was, dude, nah. Well, the United States is not dumb enough to exclude themselves from correct. this like innovative wave. Right. Correct. Correct. So when we were listening to Caitlin Long speak, like you're saying that she was only up there for 30 minutes, but she was had a very positive vibe to it, though. She was talking about an impending collapse of the banking infrastructure, but she was saying, but do not worry, guys. It's like we're going to fight this yeah, and, and we're going to win this because yeah. their fight has no legal ground. Mm. And so 
and see what she was saying that they are basically are, are poking the tiger to get the the the, the uh I guess the legal infrastructure, the judicial system to actually make this, the, the claim that, um, crypto's, you know, not going to, you know, damage the economic system and all that stuff. But mm. the point is, is that she was very positive. And so I took the more optimistic, uh, take and yeah. I man took the more pessimistic. take. I, did, I, did, I know what you're saying, but I, yeah, I definitely didn't feel like the positivity that you did <laughs> <laughs> like when, after she got off the stage we kind of like had to like leave for a minute just to kind of unpack our unpack what she just said ourselves yeah me personally i was i was like in a whole like panic mode I was like dude it's time to exit like everything yeah you know yeah. like I'm, I'm something big is coming yeah and we need to kind of like hedge Right. In the event, like it's it's something that is non-recoverable, right? And and so y even though you had that feeling, it still wasn't clear exactly what needed to be done. Of course not, but that, that's it. it you got to take calculated measures, no matter what, right? And then because before all this was just rumor, yeah, speculation. Well, she was feeling the heat already directly because she's starting. She's trying to create a, a, a bank called Custodia Bank, which yeah. is a non-fractional reserve banking. And um, I, I guess a banking cartel is not allowing it, mm -hmm. and so she's she's receiving a, a bunch of resistance. Yeah. But uh, so she was blowing the whistle, but it wasn't exactly clear as to like how to hedge no. against this. Absolutely not. No, of course not. That's and that's not. She's not going to tell everybody. Well, she she didn't even know exactly how it was going to happen, but she yeah. said that she's getting resistance, and mm -hmm. the banking uh, cartel are pushing back against crypto. Well, she was even more specific than that. She basically said, "This is straight from the Biden cabinet. Like this That's is a right. this is a That's White right. House yes. initiative." Yes. Somehow, like she got the the details of that. Um, you know, this isn't just like the Federal Reserve. Yeah, she had names and everything, and she yeah. didn't disclose those names. But yeah, yeah. She basically, she's out there. I got receipts, yeah. motherfuckers. Yeah. If you don't believe me, it's like come come at me. Yeah. I could prove all this shit's about to happen, right? So, yeah. it was terrifying, man. Like this whole. Cause this is the first time, like, you know, a lot of things have happened in the crypto space. A lot of collapses, right? Yeah. A lot of, um, yeah, we've seen 80, 90% collapses, mm -hmm. but when, uh, USDC collapsed only 7%, that was yeah. like the scariest. That in con conjunction of like a major Silicon Valley bank yeah. going under at the same time. And then starting to understand how much exposure like crypto and Web3 has to these banks. And yeah, you USDC, just didn't know. They, and then like for like a couple of days there wasn't really any clarity no there from, wasn't from anything anybody no it was just circle basically saying yeah we get we're exposed but everything's fine like like yeah exactly, exactly. what sam FTX, said yeah exactly <laughs> so they were just like what the fuck for like a couple of days we're running around like headless chickens like not <laughs> knowing what to do yeah nobody's telling us like the truth yeah it was terrifying like legit legit yeah you know? Yeah, and Ugh. and it went down as low as thirteen percent, and <laughs> yeah, it for, just kept going down. If it seemed like, yeah, I mean, for a second it looked like potentially that that was going to go to zero, yeah. but but realistically not, because I think Circle took like a seven or eight percent hit to their, I guess their deposit the deposit portfolio reserves, reserves yeah. for their USD one to one pegging. Right, because that's the thing about Circle. They're actually very transparent about where it is they're holding all their cash mm -hmm. in order to sustain that one-to-one -one peg. Yeah. But again, we did. We know we knew there's multiple banks that were like in line to, yeah, suffer the same fate as uh, Silicon Valley Bank. And the four banks that collapsed, three of them are closely connected to the crypto industry. Correct. So we didn't know the extent. It's like, okay, for sure, like right now, 7% of Circle's holdings are like basically yeah. illiquid. Yes. So, but we didn't know the extent of like how much other, like how much more they were holding in these other banks, which ones are going to fail. Everybody was speculating about a massive bank run from Silicon Valley. Yep. Like on Monday. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, holy shit, man. Like what's going on? Like sky was falling yeah. like for real this time. Yeah. yeah. So it was falling, and then Sunday Sunday night comes around, and the government mm. steps in. Yeah, literally it's last minute, right? Yeah, yeah. Before Monday opening. Yeah, so yeah. at that moment, it was um, Sunday night, and USDC was at 97 cents to the dollar. Mm -hmm. So it had recovered most of it. Yeah. And uh, once the government stepped in, that 100% of deposits is going to be covered. Do not worry. Taxpayers are not paying. 
Exactly. It just shoots back right back up. Right to back a to normal. Everything's yeah. fine. Every, yeah, everything's fine. There's no, no, there's nothing to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> Gov- big government got us again. <laughs> you know, so that's how the market kind of reacts. And right now, the markets are pretty significantly up since all this happened like a week ago. <coughs> Especially Bitcoin. Yeah. You know? well, what what now, I found, I found weird is, I, I just don't understand how the actual number, the market number of USDC goes down. So just instantaneously, just like that. Like, even if there's rumors that a bank failed, like all of a sudden USDC tanks, like how is that a peg? I don't understand. A thousand percent. I mean, it's confidence, right? I Uh, guess everything is depending on confidence, but it didn't seem the, the whole point of the USDC being backed by the dollar is that there's really no confidence. Well, yeah, it's just one for one. Correct. And that's part of their whole transparency. But in that moment, like there was no more certainty. That's the problem. So whenever banks are stable and like everybody has confidence in like the. So, so basically from a technical perspective, there just happens to be at that moment, a lot more people selling USDC yeah. than yeah. people. It was basically USDC. like a digital bank run. Like that, yeah. that's what we were witnessing in real time that's as USDC kept going down. It, it was like the visualization of what was happening at what happened yes. to Silicon Valley. Bank. Yeah. 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 Same thing happened like in, in, in crypto, I'm, I'm assuming it's like, even more uh potentially uh what's the word faster like more a, rapid yeah of a pullout right because it's it's digital yeah you, these motherfuckers had to go up to the bank yeah yeah, yeah. there was a line at the <laughs> bank <laughs> to take out their money exactly and like the big guys got their money out first like who peter Thiel. peter Thiel. He was yeah. basically like the he blew the well he was uh the one who started the bank run correct because uh I guess he's got inside knowledge about what's going on in Silicon Valley. I wouldn't say inside knowledge, but he I mean, he gets a, the calls, you know. Correct. He's that guy. Yeah, he's that guy. <laughs> is like. Yeah. So then, what he did was he got that phone call, Silicon Valley Bank. He he probably took out his own money, right? Mm-hmm. Called his portfolio companies. Like, you should probably remove your money from Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah. That spread like wildfire, and then you have a classic bank run. Correct. It at the speed of the internet. Yeah. So what is it that caused all this then? So Peter Till must have, Peter Till and his team, they, they saw something. And actually, there's a guy who owns like a, a little unknown hedge fund, I think. And he made a big short position on Silicon yeah. Valley Bank way back in January. He put out like a tweet thread in January, basically really? sounding the alarm bells. Of, we need to follow this guy, dude. Oh, absolutely. He's the new, what's his name? I, Ball, like Steve Ballmer. I, I don't remember. The big short guy for the 2008 yeah. collapse. They made a movie about him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this guy will probably get a movie as well, you know, because he made the big short call before anybody else, well, you know, and then now everybody's referencing like, oh, okay, he, he knew exactly what needed to happen in order for, for a bank run to commence, right? And it was basically, they had to, I guess, capitalize some of those unrealized li- losses from, uh, what is it, like over leveraging themselves yeah. by buying the top of the bond market, essentially, because yeah. at, for the longest time, interest rates were at zero. So and they're pumping in so much cash from like the overinflated tech market. Yeah. You know, and then they just their deposits went up by like 300 percent. Yeah. Yeah. So what do they do? They're just like, I, mean, I guess we just buy treasuries with this stuff, mortgage backed securities, right? Could just to generate like a, some yeah. kind of yield. Yeah, it was one and a half percent yield. Yeah, which when, when you're talking about billions of dollars, like yeah, this is hundreds of millions of dollars. That's, that's yummy, dude. Yeah. That, how do you that not? That pays the bills. Yeah. Yeah. How do you not? I mean, everybody does this, but it, what matters, I guess, is like how much. How, uh, yeah, how and, leveraged you are. Yeah. How exposed you are to a potential event of, okay, what happens when interest rates go back up? And right? the Fed has been increasing interest rates at the highest rate in yeah. history. Yeah, so they didn't account for that, I guess. Like they didn't expect it to be that aggressive. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you could expect that. I don't but think- you always have to hedge. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like the big takeaway. Everybody needs to kind of like learn. You can't assume anything in any market. Like you yeah, gotta you, right. you gotta like finagle, dude. You yeah. gotta have finesse and you gotta understand like the worst case scenarios and not be like in 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 the fucking yeah. pathway of that that bazooka yeah that could happen you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah. so it's like you still get a little bit of your profits but you just don't over leverage yourself to any one specific basket but so but uh, there's other factors that contributed to this so not only the fed increasing the interest rates but 
a lot of a lot of investors weren't investing anymore in projects and therefore there was no more deposits mm. into bank accounts because nobody was investing and so all all projects were doing was burning cash true at, yeah. because you got to pay bills yeah payroll all those things yeah. so deposits were dwindling and then on top of that there was no input right into the system there was no um you know more investments right silicon mm -hmm. valley bank mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden um those people that were exiting the silicon valley bank they had to sell those treasuries at a loss mm -hmm. which which prompted them to try to raise two billion dollars and then all of a sudden that sounded the the, yeah. the, the red flag to everybody like to that like, was it that was it it's like we got to pull our money out because yeah. they they run out of deposits correct it's very it's, it's insane how fragile like all of this it is, is. two billion dollars doesn't seem like a whole lot of money it doesn't whenever they have like 200 billion dollars exactly. in assets or something like that but the, the big deciding factor is again is that confidence thing you, yeah you that's cannot, what it was yeah you just cannot lose confidence in the financial system Dude. which is why the fed had to step in and like kind of like stop all this because the only backstop to like a loss in confidence in the financial banking sector is like the government the government stepping in yeah i mean there's precedent for that yeah you know and if they didn't do what they did then who knows how yeah. rapid this contagion would have spread and so just because the government steps in doesn't mean they solve the issue right the, no, the problem that. is still there absolutely it's just uh another it's like a the little can just got kicked again yeah it got kicked we've yeah. been saying like how long can the federal reserve keep kicking this fucking can we don't know nobody knows yeah but everybody's aware that's the thing now like i think back in 2008 that's the first time people were like open their eyes and like or like or a little bit more exposed to just like how like again like house of card ish this yeah. whole financial system is and like it just depends on what levers the federal reserve has pulled at, at any given time yeah that's what gives the market confidence to kind of like resume business as usual right, right right but everybody is also like massively aware like that this is not sustainable right there there's an end point to this so there has to be yeah there is but but the problem with that is maybe there's a chance where there maybe isn't an end point because they could just and they are the federal reserve uh i guess the, the the reserve dollar right for the world correct but but and they can just print more of it inflation goes up but things things would increase in in price and that's it like that's the consequence but the the risk they have in that strategy is in the same thing with the banks at some point the rest of the world could lose confidence in the dollar itself. That's a itself. good point. Yes. Like the, and then the, the ramifications of that, all of a sudden the, U, the U.S. dollar yes. uh, excellent point. ceases to become that world reserve currency. Then we're in a big pickle. Yeah. <laughs> and then if the rest of the world decides that Bitcoin is a world reserve currency, all of a sudden the, the, the United States is no longer a superpower. Yeah, which is a big fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Big fuck to the United States, right? Like this is Dude, what they're trying to avoid all along. That's that's the ending point, right? It isn't it isn't yeah. the the oh, what's it called the ceiling, the debt ceiling being increased. Like it's whenever everybody loses confidence exactly. in the dollar, right? Which yes. it's I think slowly. We already know other nations are working on their own, you know, CBDCs, CBDC. yeah, their own kind of like exit routes away from dependency. Yeah. And then after all this, if this gets out of hand, you know again it's, it's just people stop you know pegging their own economic yeah like uh value to to the to dollar. Our dollar yeah it's like man that's not good news dog dude that's the <laughs> that's the ticket dude that's the indicator well now, so then so then it, do you understand why 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 they're so afraid of for sure yeah crypto and bitcoin and stuff like this yeah yeah but i don't know if if, if uh, the target of bitcoin and crypto is really the problem here like yeah, crypto is like the alternative world reserve currency, right? Mm -hmm. Let's let's say it's Bitcoin, but it's it, the issue isn't that we have an alternative world reserve currency. The issue is the lack of confidence in the dollar mm. growing. Yeah, that's the real issue. It doesn't matter. It could be yen, the world reserve currency it could be, mm. you know, uh, rupee. It doesn't matter what it is. The, the point is that the world reserve currency is no longer the dollar. Yeah. Right, so that's that's really the core issue now. Is there anything the United States could do about it? I'm not. I'm not so sure. Well, there's the other thing because we're starting to see like, uh, why is the White House targeting crypto? Like, what is the motivation behind that? From what I've been hearing, is because they're, they're building sentiment, I guess, among regulators or I guess entities concerned about like this mm. confidence issue in the U.S. dollar or the economic status of the United States crypto poses like a, a systemic risk potentially of some kind For sure right so what is that risk 
that crypto could have on like a financial system. Well, like, I mean, if if like you're saying, like if if the the whole world loses confidence in the dollar, then what is the alternative world reserve currency? Like you would think it's Bitcoin. It could be any other currency, right? It just depends on who has confidence in which currency. And it seems logical to assume that it would be Bitcoin, like that default currency that other countries select as a world reserve currency. Yeah. And so maybe that's why they're pushing back on crypto, but they're just like in, in, further burning themselves if they do that. It, it, I think it's partly that. And then there's also the, the component of, I guess, the intertanglement of like the crypto space and the traditional banking sector, right? Because mm. banks still are involved with what's going on in the crypto space. And yeah. after FTX has collapsed, I think it's evident now there's a precedent to where some entity within the crypto industry, I guess, grew to the scale mm. of like they're almost like in that too big to fail scenario. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. You know, like if this would have left like left to flourish like FTX for, let's say, five more years, they probably would have grown to a status of too big to fail. And then if they did fail for whatever reason, whether it's fraud, you know, financial yeah. mismanagement in the treasury side of uh, fucking, I don't know, a massive hack of some kind. Yeah. doesn't matter. Whatever it is that causes that entity to fail, that could be in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Yeah, uh, yeah. It basically, it's like it'd be like a major bank collapsing in itself, but it's tied to the banking infrastructure, right? So then that causes, a, a, again, like a contagion event. Yeah, I mean, that's right? primarily the reason why Signature Bank went under. Correct. Yeah. So this is what I mean. Like, th th there is evidence of like a systemic tie, at least from the Web3 side mm, yeah, there is. to the traditional finance side. So considering that crypto is very still Wild West, still largely unregulated. Which is wild. It's been around <laughs> for 14 years or something like that. Yeah, but it takes time for, I guess, the government. To, and and you, we know how the government is. It's a reactionary yeah, of course. force. Like most, most of the time, they don't take preventative measures. They react to whenever things go sour. And then that's when real laws come out and real regulation comes about, you know? So yeah. I kind of get it. I know what they're saying. I mean, I don't think it's a good idea to exclude the United yeah. States completely from like this whole paradigm shift yeah <laughs> like this is something that's almost like a sure lose it's almost like a lose lose for the it States. is a lose lose yeah yeah because now they're they're having to concede power Correct. to something like bitcoin potentially there's that and uh then <laughs> they they lose the power as a result and now all of a sudden it's a yeah. level playing field there's nothing they could do to curtail like uh I guess global adoption interests of as of Bitcoin. Right, exactly. They cannot do anything for that. All they could do is strengthen their own position within right. this race with the dollar. Yes. And they're having we're having massive di difficulties doing that, right? Yeah. So it's it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. You know, what if the United so, States used their military forces, oh god, their strength uh -huh. to back the dollar but also add Bitcoin? As, what does uh, that mean? Like, as go and seize everyone's Bitcoin? No, no, no. Oh. No, they would just be collecting Bitcoin. Oh. Yeah. They would just like hold that as a reserve, just like they hold gold as a reserve. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> I think that would be a reasonable play, like hedging. You would think. <laughs> I think, yeah. I mean, in I the mean, event. I mean, assuming that these guys are smart, I mean, isn't that like the smart thing to do? Just like collect Bitcoin? And hold it as a reserve. Uh, I feel like they have to be, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, because if if the everyone outside the United States, all the countries decide that something else is a world reserve currency, I just don't think Bitcoin's gotten to that stage yet. No, it definitely it's four hundred billion dollars. That's like yeah, nothing burger. Exactly, not yet. You're right. Maybe, but now is the time to accumulate. Like, well, at least like now is the time. People are really honing in on this narrative, right? If this truly is the start of the next financial collapse, the yeah. biggest one since we've seen since 2008, then this whole Bitcoin narrative, this is, it's time to shine, yeah, right? We've been, right? We've been waiting for this to kind of happen to see what, you know, is Bitcoin truly the safe haven asset it claims to be? Yeah. Like, just like precious metals are, and they've been traditionally pretty reliable in yeah. scenarios like this. Right. Right. So this is it. This is Bitcoin's like big time to shine. <laughs> yeah. If 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 the macro situation worsens and we do have like many 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 more banks, like in the process of um, you know, collapsing. If those unrealized <laughs> losses actually 
become capitalized and every all of a sudden everybody just i don't know becomes insolvent in some way yeah and then yeah that's gonna have huge effects on the stock market and just the global economy as a whole if bitcoin some way some miraculously way can just <laughs> be, be everybody's escape yeah, yeah yeah then yeah it's gg dude it's over it's cemented in human history as like this is the new digital gold right you know? this is it this is the, this is the moment yeah and it would be more valuable than digital gold because right now it's worth 11 or 12 trillion dollars and we're looking at bitcoin worth at 400 billion yeah so what is that that's big it's a big that's one it's a 30x <laughs> return correct at least yeah so i mean so in other words this should be like the start of the bull market right for bitcoin yeah. at least uh, yeah for theoret sure. theoretically and if, I mean, if this is true prices are indicating so yeah, I mean, Bitcoin's been kind of going on a tear, dude. I mean, uh, we've been saying <sighs> this might just be one. It's a it's a black swan event. So we have our, our own like built in assumptions when it comes to evaluating Bitcoin's yeah price trajectory. Right. We were thinking like there's no way Bitcoin can just go on a, like a rapid tear at the moment because we're so far away from it happening. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Traditionally, like Bitcoin doesn't really have much of activity until like leading up. Yeah, maybe like six months before the happening. When is the next happening? In April next year. Okay. I mean, so November time frame. That's when things start waking up. <laughs> so this is potentially a black swan event at the scale that could just uh, push prop up, prop push up it, Bitcoin, push it forward a little bit, like yeah. uh, you know, get get the time frames a little bit. Yeah, skewed to the earlier side. Possible. So I mean, if I mean twenty-seven thousand dollar Bitcoin, we're almost roughly fifty percent from its all-time high. Yeah, like that's that's a big deal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, and and this was the um, so this is right before banks were collapsing. This is right before it, and as soon as they collapse, we got Bitcoin like exploding. Yeah. So this is also. I think happening on the stock market and the equities side as well. And a lot of it has to do, I think with the federal reserve's response, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because now I think money printer is yeah. printing yeah. again, is burning Check once again. Out. So, uh, I, so this chart, um, I, I discovered it through pomps email. And so I found it on Fred. What's it? What did I say? Fred STO St. Louis fed St. Louis fed. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, I kind of zoomed in here and we're looking at, we're looking at 2008 financial crisis, money printer turns on, right? Boom. More money in the yeah. circulation helps curtail the, uh, the banking collapse. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it sort of stays on yeah. for a decade. It, it definitely did. Right. So let me, <laughs> let me zoom out here. So it turns on now they start a little quantitative easing a little bit here tightening or tightening yeah yeah and then uh and then here's covid yeah it's another like black swan a pandemic right yeah big deal huge turn on right right the, yeah uh, i mean they literally turned off the the uh, economy for about a year yeah roughly maybe like six months or so in some places but yeah that was a uh, a situation where we needed some sort of injection of capital somehow right, right? so money printer goes online yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's zoom in here right so so here's covid right they turn off um i guess the economy right everybody stay home yeah and then now we have quantitative easing still yeah all the way through yeah. let's say april 2022 yeah things and this is probably like roughly when um, you know cpi numbers were yeah getting to an alarming rate right um inflation was clearly becoming like a widespread issue everybody was becoming aware of it and again like that confidence issue in the dollar was starting to emerge so it was like okay the federal reserve's job at this moment now right. is, is is time to uh inverse our activities right right this is whenever the interest rates started kicking in right and uh the money printer ceased yeah. right so you can kind of see it like in the slow drip off there so yeah. everything was kind of like falling everything was kind of going to plan yeah right? this is the federal reserve was doing its job yeah according exactly. to like the tactics that it has to in order to keep everything stabilized right right but here we are again so now <laughs> now let me zoom into that little take there yeah so now we got quantitative tightening for about uh, i would say the last year or so mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden banks start collapsing and yeah. they turn on the generator of money 
Correct. And they print three hundred billion dollars, just like that. Yeah, yeah. So, which the, I mean, I guess this. And the question is: Is this the end of uh, the Federal Reserve needing to step in to uh, ensure depositors are secure? We don't know. Obviously, we don't know what other banks might fail. Credit Suisse had to get a bailout from their own. That's right. Yeah. Central bank. Uh, Credit Suisse is a massive bank. Yeah, it's international huge. bank. Yes. So, what other massive banks out there? They're in are, Switzerland. That's yeah. the, I guess the, the, the offshore the, safe haven. Yeah, the of center the of exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but here's the thing. So they start printing three hundred billion the new dollars, right? So mm. that means that inflation should be going up. Mm. And with inflation going up, that means CPI numbers are going to go up. Yeah. And then all of a sudden. Who knows how much more dollars I need to print out in order to prevent a banking infrastructure collapse. That's right. So we're, we're in that point where we don't really know what's going to happen next. Could yes. be more printing, yeah. CPI numbers, more things get more expensive. Yeah, the yeah, Federal Reserve. Yeah, we're in a fucking definitely in an uncharted territory, like as an economy. We've never had to, or the, I guess the Fed's never had to deal with like m- multiple crises in simultaneous fashion right yeah. we've got the consumer crisis right where everybody has to deal with the ramifications of the last couple decades yeah the uh monetary policy of that where, where everyone's dealing with it like in the supermarkets yeah whatever cost of goods <laughs> but at the same time now the banks are also like potentially all collapsing at the same time so yeah. the federal reserve they can't like you know be concerned about both ends here yeah the, you know usually it's one or the other yeah, right. something's going to collapse, right? Yeah, no I mean, if we continue to pump inflation up and then the cost of goods go up, I think over like a five-year time span, if if the inflation numbers stay at this rate yeah. or higher, the price of everything's going to double. That yeah. pretty much like voids out the entire middle middle class <laughs> of like sustainability, right? Yeah. Just just to safeguard you know the financial institutions. Yeah. Which is like fuck. <laughs> what do you do if you're the Federal Reserve in this pickle? You know, who do you choose? You let the it, banks collapse in yeah. order to like curtail inflation and to make sure like you know the middle class doesn't yeah. dissipate. Yeah. Or do you let the people collapse? <laughs> yeah. Do you, leave, do you let the people suffer in order to ensure yeah. what it is that's appending the entire economic infrastructure doesn't just go kaput? Yeah. That means people can't pay for not only the groceries or the gas, but yeah, it cuts into mortgage bills and well, and it, it defaults also, on loans. Exactly. Like bigger things. Everything. Yeah goes down at that point and that that thing we were talking about confidence in the u.s financial system and the dollar and all that just goes to nothing so if you were to properly hedge here i mean either buy like not only gold (laughs) i'm on the tj wagon here firearms Uh, yeah i'm thinking like chickens yeah i'm thinking bullets (laughs) i'm thinking canned food at this point dude it's like (laughs) practical practical goods at this point you know Maybe this whole like financial game is like not even worth See, playing but, anymore. But even then, <laughs> even then, if you just like stock up on like chickens and weapons and bullets, yeah. you you have to be a looter. That means you have to go out and like find goods to like sustain yourself. Versus like preparing for like a sustainable existence, farm, you know, all the animals. Yeah, you know. Well, that's that's food growing systems. Yeah, that's the harsh reality, right? Of, majority of people will, will be have to become looters yeah <laughs> because who's who's hedging properly at this moment for one nobody it You're requires right. resources and time and planning and oh, yeah. for one understanding of what's going on yes so yeah the majority the mass majority of peoples are not going to be prepared for this in any way yeah everybody's dependent on this whole thing being figured out outside of their own involvement or even like knowledge of it occurring <laughs> you know yeah, I feel like this type of knowledge is lost on probably 95% of the population. Oh, yeah, and that's by design because this is not for... This is not fun, first of all. Well, yeah, and it's 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 to keep only like a small segment of, of people like, uh, you know, being main recipients S- yeah, of, like, survivors of the, of of the this. gains of these, you know, these ebbs and flows of the market. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I'll be ahead of all the other looters. <laughs> you create like the biggest arsenal, dude. Yeah. yeah. TJ starts looting. Start, before. Your, start your battalions now, right. <laughs> you yeah. know, start having as many kids as you have, as you can have, 
yeah. in preparation so you can have like your own little compound unit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know, dude. There's that. And then there's, then you got to like factor in what's going on like in the uh, it's Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, like in the fucking that frontier as well. Yeah. There's some, there's more shit going on than just, you know, the financial doom that's ahead of us. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is like, um, this is the, equi- this is the equivalent of a financial nuclear strike. Yeah. Well, this to me, this, this just feels like, you know, like again, this stability, like the legs are being kicked yeah. away. Yeah. And w- 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 the thing, the reason why I've been talking about this for years is because I'm, I'm deeply terrified. Yeah. Because of my understanding of history mm-hmm. <laughs> of what comes after these types of events. I'm very scared of that. And I think most, for well, sure most people don't understand what that means or what that's going to look like. I agree. I agree. Nobody even has that like in their experience box called their brains. <laughs> 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 Nobody, at least like not on this, on this side where, we're, where we reside. Most people have no idea what well, that's Well, the closest like. thing to come to this is uh, the 1920s exactly. collapse. Well, guess what? Everyone's grandpaps and grandmas are pretty are much dead. Yeah. There's no one's around to like tell us, you know, youngins what's good. What's good. It's like yeah. you guys are fucked and you guys need to like <laughs> settle down youngins you know you need to you know go to church but here's the thing the 1920s it was bad but it's not as bad as what we're talking about here this is like a yeah the the dollar is being questioned as being the federal reserve you know note for the planet yeah agreed so this is much bigger than 1920s well i i think so uh uh, yeah i think the 1920s collapse i mean it was a new emerging market right yeah and as a result, that's where a lot of these regulations that that's we right. depend on came from. Again, it was, it was basically like, think of it as like an early crypto market. That was like the Wild West. Yeah. A lot of people got rich in the 20s. You know, the, the, New York City literally like blossomed as a result. Yeah. And, retail was left holding the bag. Yeah. And yeah, like the whole financial system kind of like came from that. And then, you know, the Federal Reserve stepped in to kind of like, you know, navigate the future of this whole market and this economy and stuff and yeah now a lot of the things that like our founding fathers kind of warned us against you know it's like (laughs) whatever you do don't let a central bank like take over and like dictate the economy yeah yeah or like we we promise mr jefferson (laughs) (laughs) that will never happen here yeah and it fucking did and here we are as a result like they knew this shit would happen at some point yeah somehow those motherfuckers are so goddamn smart so brilliant yeah so ahead of their time yeah they yeah. warned us they did it was it's like crazy the, the worst thing you could do like in the future you know new americans yeah <laughs> is to allow central banks to take over and fuck here we are dude <laughs> it's happened damn dude this is quite the timeline we're on <laughs> yeah do you think ai is gonna save us from this one dude? no i don't think so <laughs> i definitely don't think so good yeah i never did i, I never like he, uh what's the word had that much hope and faith in technology like it's our savior to all this i mean can it like suggest make suggestions i think if it had enough actually yeah it could i think if it had all the information that Mm -hmm. we're talking about here like disposable like on a whim on a question i think it could make reasonable suggestions yeah, I mean, GTP4 just got released, so maybe... Yeah, maybe now's the time to start asking. <laughs> that like, would be the fucking... That would be the best marketing campaign for, like, open AI. It's like, it would be. It's like, how do you... How do we get out of this pickle, <laughs> AI? <laughs> you know, what do we do? Somebody needs to be asking, like, you know, because it's not clear. I mean, we can't just 100% rely on what the Federal Reserve... Imagine if, if it responded with, like, easy by Bitcoin. Dude, we got to try this out now. Yeah. We got to ask it and see what it says. See, the, the only issue is we don't know if ChatGPT4 has access to, mm. like, the latest information. Like, it doesn't sure. know that we just printed $300 billion. It probably doesn't know that these banks collapse. Yeah, it doesn't know like that. that. I, I wonder why it's not up to date. I don't like, know. Real time, like, Fed I don't know. information. I don't it's know It's probably either. complex. Something, it's I'm very sure complex. it is. I mean, I think they know that's, like, the optimal design. Like and it has real time feed just like we do. Yeah. But and it would always be unfiltered. There'd be like racist like, you know, mm. inputs and all kinds of like negative inputs. Yeah. So they, they have to filter it out somehow. Doesn't matter though, dude. Yeah, AI is not going to be the great savior here. Yeah. <laughs> I guess this is just uh this is just 
the macro side, dude. Uh, we've kind of like been ignoring it for not ignoring it, but ha- not covering it as much as we used to. Yeah. Just because. I don't, it, yeah. Th- there's no money to be made here unless. Well, I mean, there kind of is. It's not about money. It's just, it's about you got to always factor in the macro situation because we're Web3 guys, right? We're, we're in the crypto space and we're very honed in on our world, our, our little zone. Yeah. But we know the macro situation has a lot of impact on, yeah. on everything that's right. going on in Web3. So <laughs> having said that, what's the future look like, dude? <laughs> what do you think? Um, I'm well, sure people want to know. It's like, how are we supposed to react to all this? Well, I, I, obviously, the Federal Reserve has a big problem to solve. So they're going to be clearly their solution right now is to print more money. So in the short term, most likely, the like the market understands what that means. Yeah. At least like the major players in these markets, they understand as long as the money printer is going, there's money to be made in these markets. Yes. Right? So expect probably some positive momentum as long as the Federal Reserve allows it to go on, I guess. As long as we can... Uh, the, the- uh, the public can yeah. can stomach the inflation. That too. Right. That's that the too. only way. Because once the yeah. public starts like rioting, is like I can't buy groceries. Yeah. We, we got a problem. That's that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of things to look out for as far as like wh- how the market's going to react to this. Because I think right now in the short term, it's it's a positive indicator. You know. Yeah. But the the, the actual fallout from all this hasn't really hit yet. Right. So, yeah. And so the Fed, they're not going to increase interest rates anymore because that's going to increase the chances of banks failing. I think they are, though. I think you think think so? I'm pretty sure they still have to. And that's what I'm saying. Like, this is very weird. I don't think this money printer shit's going to like be on for too long. Well, maybe they could just print more money, increase the interest rates, have the liquidity to buy out the banks Mm. or keep the deposits in in Mm -hmm. the banks. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's good enough to like, you know, Get the get the banks to maturity on their purchases. Yeah, and all of a sudden, like they're good. Yeah, it really does. All, yeah, it all depends on inflation. Like because we know if yeah. inflation is still up, then they have to keep raising their interest rates. They just do by design, and that's going to have more fallout effects on the the banking side, no matter what, hmm. because everybody's exposed to this. This, uh, so don't keep your money in banks, basically, because they could default. But then the government's got your back. As, as far uh, as deposits go. That's that's uh, the sentiment of now, right? Yeah. Because but of what they did. That's not sustainable. It's not. And we don't know like at what size and scale of, of a banking collapse will the government actually be able to step in like all the way, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I mean, what else are you going to do? If you can't keep your money in the bank, yeah. what, what do you do? Bitcoin. Oh my God, <laughs> dude. <laughs> all roads lead to Bitcoin. <laughs> What are you going to do with Bitcoin, though? That's the thing. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, if you can't exit, I mean, yeah, what's the point? Exactly. There yeah. really is, like, no safe No, spot. there isn't. Like, crypto. Get you some rubles. <laughs> some rubles. Some Iraqi dinars. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, dude. I don't fucking know anymore. And that's the problem. That is. You're right. Everybody, if, if I feel this way, we're like, I, I feel like nothing is safe, to be honest. Yeah, that's what it feels like. That's I agree. a problem. Even banks. I don't feel safe in the bank. Yeah, I agree. That yeah. is a monumental issue <laughs> for the economy nice. and, and that's just me who has no money <laughs> <laughs> imagine the guys that have tons of money and they don't feel comfortable anymore about like where that money should be yeah you can't stick it in treasuries anymore yep because you know people are losing confidence there's a decrease in demand for these things because of what's going on with the interest rates and stuff and nobody knows what the fed's next moves will be yeah right you can't believe the fed anymore or they can't believe the government and like they're yeah, and their Security ability to back there's... you. Yeah. Uh, so, like, what do you do? Yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah, okay, out. Bitcoin sounds cool on paper, but yeah, there's what if there's no real exits? Exit. Yeah. You can't trust stable coins anymore in the, in the crypto market. If you want to like spread your, you I know, guess one exit capital. that we're not accounting for is potentially like institutions accepting Bitcoin for payment. Yeah, that's that's the only form of exit that doesn't have to include the banks. Seems highly unlikely. It is. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know if that's yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems highly unlikely. So in that scenario, man, like unfortunately this becomes like a mainstay of uh any business or entity, whatever, 
uh, of daily endeavors. You got to keep close eyes on your treasury, close eyes on the news and the status of the economy. And you have to be nimble and flexible and be able to move in and out quickly of different what asset if, classes. What if the government adopts a CBDC where there's like burning mechanisms and like takes all the the mechanics of like tokenomics seriously and and uh, transparently? Well, that's basically what the Federal Reserve is. It's like a... Yeah, yeah but... Yeah. It's, 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 think of the Federal Reserve as like one ginormous DAO that's issuing like some stable coin. <laughs> yeah, a DAO that no one has input on. Correct. Well, yeah, it's it's a SOW. Yeah. Centralized organization. A, a yeah, co. A SO. Yeah. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's, it's a central bank. And they, I'm, I'm pretty sure at some point they're going to have to do their own digital currency of their own. and They they're might, might yeah. reboot this whole thing. Potentially, and like not depend on the the banks to become like right. you know the the harborers of like what gives these digital currencies their stability because as proven yeah they're not a hundred percent reliable at least not as reliable as like the federal government according to their eyes yeah you know and I understand because deposits they need to use the deposits to make money otherwise yeah. the deposit that just sits there that doesn't do anything doesn't pay the yeah. bills. Correct. Yeah, we can't trust banks anymore to be like 100% responsible custodians of our uh, yeah. financial positionings, I guess. But because, uh, you know, banks can fail and uh, government cannot. <laughs> if government does fail, like it's pretty much the whole show ends. Yeah. Right. So yeah. from their perspective, that is the safest uh, issuer of, uh, I don't know, monetary strength, Yeah. I guess. Yeah, so this was a crazy last two weeks. Um, as you can see here, uh, the last uh, Black Swan event happened in 2008. Yeah. And then happened again in 2020 with COVID. And we're seeing the potential, another potential Black Swan event with banks right. failing. Yeah. In, uh, yeah. In the span of three years. I'm definitely not like in some sort of like, there's no way we're heading like 200K Bitcoin anytime soon, in my opinion. I think mm -hmm. this is a short lived euphoric moment for bitcoin right now for just we're yeah just talking bitcoin at the sure, moment yeah i, I agree mean, we'll probably get to like 30 35k yeah. right <laughs> and then i expect something whether it's a quantitative tightening something something to hit the news and uh people to kind of like snap back to reality yeah bitcoin is no way no way going to like 100k like anytime soon we still got at least a year another happening cycle before yeah it potentially thinks about doing that yeah, unless like something hits the news where like I don't know some sort of insane uh, adoption event. Yeah, more, from a more, government more scale. banks failing, less more banks failing, less trust. Just maybe like Switzerland itself is like, all right, we're gonna now that our banks in our uh, yeah we need domain, a bailout. Yeah, we we need to adopt Bitcoin a little more stringently as a hedge against what's going on in the United States. Like more stuff like this. More nations around the world starting to recognize like the dollar is weakening. Dude, imagine instead of buying mortgage-backed securities, they buy Bitcoin. Well, that's what needs to happen. Holy yeah. shit! That's the only real bull scenario where you can get to these like trillion-dollar yeah ex uh, expectations, I guess. Yeah. You know, so this is interesting, man. It's it's slowly starting to happen. You know, all these yeah. macro things. We, we said it in order for Bitcoin to get because it's not going to be like a corporate run up that's going to cause the next bull cycle in order to get the amount of capital that's required to get yeah. Bitcoin to that. Countries need to go in. Yeah. It's shit like this. But and what would you say before countries go in, the whole financial system has to destabilize. Yeah, first. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's just it's so it's like a fucking script. Dude. It is. It <laughs> Satoshi is. literally came up <laughs> with the script, dude. I think this might be. This might be end times, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it was foreseen See, in the Bible. It, it, what's well, I don't know about all that, but <laughs> why not? Is that it's so crazy anymore? <laughs> I mean, that is crazy. Okay. I, I'd have to say that that would be that would qualify as crazy. He draws the line. Yeah. 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 However, that's what Dan Larimer's saying isn't that funny? Oh yeah, that's true. He did say that. He's tweeting about end times. Like like this is it. This is evidence of yeah. like biblical prophecy, yeah, yeah, like yeah. like coming to fruition. Yeah. I mean, Dan Larimer was once the golden boy of the crypto space. Yeah, I just don't know how much connection there is to, like, banks failing to the Bible or anything like that, so. Yeah, we'll see. Um, <laughs> but there's evidence to suggest that shit is falling apart, yeah, right? And correct. so there, there is a lot of, um, you know, sentiment around that and its connection to, like, these prophecies and all that, so. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, let, let's call it here. I appreciate you guys for watching. This has been uh, the Block Runner podcast number one. 170, 147, 147. Yeah, like way that. off, dude. Yeah, dude, something <laughs> like that. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. If, uh, if this like too deep uh, macroeconomic discussion is like too into the weeds, let us know in the comment section below. Mm -hmm. Follow us on Twitter at the Block Runner, at Meadowzone.io, and at Roby AI, and we will catch you in the next podcast. Peace. Mm -hmm.